the way 81 bonds work and this is this is a very strange part about banking okay so banking is like this banking is based on capital which means if i have 100 rupees i can lend up to 1000 rupees and have 10% car capital adequacy ratio if i have 100 rupees and i lend 500 rupees i have 20% uh, CAR, which is capital matic. So if I have, a, uh, you know, lent out 500 crores, anything further will reduce my CR. So if I let, so for instance, let's say I wanted to maintain 15% CR for whatever, because regulatory wants and all that stuff. That means for every 100 rupees, I can do 600 crores, roughly 650 crores. I can lend 650 crores. I can borrow the other 550. I have 100, I borrow 550, I lend a total of 660. That's all I'm allowed. Now, if I have to, if I have reached that limit and then I need to lend more, I have to raise more capital. This capital is a problem because now what happens is capital can be lost in or can be gained in two ways. One, I make a profit and if I make a 50 crore profit, my 100 crores becomes 150. That 150 then allows me to lend 150 into 6, so roughly 1000 crores. So what was 650 crores is now 1000 crores I can uh, lend. So I get a 6x increment on whatever profit I make. But typically what happens is people make a return on assets of about 2%. So roughly uh, at max. So a 650 crore book will earn you 13, 14 crores in uh, 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 in profits. So 100 becomes 113. So you can lend from 100 and uh, from 650, you can only lend to 700, 710 or something like that. So that's that's not enough. So now I need more capital. I can raise more capital by issuing more shares to somebody, but that somebody may not be willing to buy it. I mean, because what happens now is I dilute my equity, right? So everybody sees a lower earning per share. And effectively, if I have the same uh, or larger earnings, but on a greater group of shares, my earnings per share hasn't increased. So I want to increase my earnings per share, but that's how my stock price will grow. How do I therefore, as a banker, get more capital without diluting equity. The answer to that happens to be in this 81 bonds. Very interesting instrument. They said, okay, this is equity, but it's worse than equity. But we will not tell them it is worse than equity. We'll call them 81 bonds. Very nice term, okay? Because what essentially it is, is like this. If uh, you give me 100 rupees, I have 100 rupees of my own. I mean, for, let's say I have 100 crores on, on in, a, in a bank in equity, but I borrow another 30 crores using this 81 bonds, uh, additional tier one bonds. The bonds have a very specific structure that says, I will pay you a certain amount of interest rate every year. That interest rate can be 7%, 7.5%, whatever, whatever it is uh, that you'll accept. You say, okay, fine. What will I get for that? I'll give you the money every, it's a perpetual bond. So I never have to redeem the principal. So to me, it's like equity. In equity, you never have to pay back the principal or anything like that back to the shareholders, right? So technically, it is like equity, except you have to pay a coupon interest every year. But you don't have to pay that coupon interest. It's like if everything is fine, I'll pay you the coupon interest. That means 7.8% or 8% I'll pay you every year. But if I'm in trouble, I may choose not to pay you the coupon. And you're like, okay, one year you won't pay, then maybe next year you'll pay. Yeah, 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 fine. But until I am feeling better, I won't pay. But there's another sinister point here, which is that I can say, listen, you gave me 30 rupees. I can choose not to return your 30 rupees at all and never pay a coupon again. Cancel your entire uh, bond completely without any recourse, which means you can't come after me and say, give me shares instead. Uh, I will take your property and I will sell it. You can't. There's no recourse to anything. I just take it and because I'm in trouble, I can convert that to equity and use it as, as if it's mine. But I won't even give you shares in return for it. So effectively, um, it is like a bond which is even worse than equity. A bond is usually better than equity because bonds get paid before equity does. But this particular bond, 81 bond, gets paid doesn't even, I mean, in fact, it can be written off before equity is written off. That's what happened in the s -Pack. Now, the problem is uh, there is one particular feature of these bonds called call options where they say, well, a bank can say it will, because there's a perpetual bond, you never have to return the principal. The bank has a call option. This is after five years, I can choose to return the principal if I want to. That means if I have issued a bond today, 2022, in 2027, I can say, listen, uh, since you own my bond, thank you very much. But here's a here's my call option. I'll pay you back hundred rupees for what every hundred rupees you gave me. So the principal that I'll pay back with the interest, of course. Uh, and you know, 
the so people bet on this they say okay well you know what it's hdfc bank it's sbi they are definitely not going to be in trouble so i will not lose my coupon or my principal but after 5 years i am trusting them to even call my bond and pay me back my principal now why does hdfc do this because obviously they want they want to increase their earnings without diluting the eps so they are very happy doing this uh second because they want it they will ensure that this call option if they are in good times this call option is called so that means after 5 years if things are going well they'll say okay listen i'll take back, i'll give you back your money now when you give people back tier 1 capital your capital has shrunk right so you issue new tier 1 bonds to somebody else or sometimes to the same people and say acha give me another 5 years of kala bond so they effectively it becomes like a 5 year bond people start thinking of it like that it's a very bad mechanism because on the upside you get your 7.84% which is what hdfc bank issued its bonds at but if you look at um you know uh, a, a default situation or a problem in the economy something 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 hdfc bank is not doing well they can choose not to return your principal at all so on the upside your upside is capital 7.8% per year or downside is zero that means you can lose 100% of your capital so it's amazing that for something like that we would price the bond as if it's just like a regular um you know bond that's trading in the market because pricing of the hdfc bond uh was almost as much as hdfc's own long term bonds where it is secured these are not 81 bonds so 81 i won't even call them bond let's call them 81s the 81s are terrible and the regular bonds are great because they allow you to say if hdfc bank doesn't pay back go to its branch you can you know we will gather all its assets computers real estate everything everything sell it uh, and then whatever is come we'll recover and give it to all people who owe uh, who hdfc bank owes money to right so because a bond can do that and then all the equity gets you know gets paid only after all of this a regular bond today trades as much as um, in fact exactly probably as much as, as the same which is hdfc's uh, let me show you this on the screen mm there you go i hope you can see this so you see this hdfc finance uh, hdfc is merging with hdfc bank so i'll use that as a proxy everybody knows it's merging right so 27 july 1932 uh, 2032 so 2032 is 10 years away a 10 year HDFC bond is trading at 7.75 why would you take a super risky perpetual 81 and give accept only 7.84% for it very tiny difference between that and this the same thing at a rural electrification corporation this is like government of india psu and that of 2025 maturity that's not even 2032 2025 is 3 years from now it's trading at 7.97% so you're actually i think the 81 of hdfc is more risky than this bond more more far more risky than this bond because i have zero uh, i feel there is almost zero chance that rec will go bankrupt by 2025 given that i mean i think there's even less chances than hdfc um bank being in trouble effectively the risk of hdfc bank being in trouble versus rec going completely bust is uh, you know more tilted towards uh, hdfc banks more probable to do that than to than to see rec go bust in 3 years and yet the bonds are there are trading at 7.97 versus the hdfc's most risky bond is trade more risky instrument not bond is trading at 7.84 uh, it's basically a mispricing of risk i'm not saying these are bad bonds for people to buy because mostly apparently retail can't buy them uh, i don't know for sure because i think uh, if you look at you know retail bonds uh, what happens is first the bonds are sold to institutions and as we saw in the recent there was an order against rana kapoor in the rana kapoor what has happened is rana kapoor has sold all these bonds the 81 bonds 81 of um, uh, yes bank has been sold to india bulls housing finance and india bulls housing finance said boss bikwa do yaar i don't want this bond on my balance sheet so yes bank people apparently were told and especially the orders came apparently from rana kapoor that said sell these bonds to people 
that means whoever hn is anybody who has 10 lakh rupees 10 lakh rupees of the slot and you will facilitate a transfer from ib india bulls housing finance to the um, uh, retail customer and you remember this yes bank 81 holders lost 100% of their money which means that effectively these people were scammed into it in a way but it was because of persuasive efforts uh, of uh, people in the bank a lot of people managed to buy this stuff and perhaps some of the bankers themselves didn't realize this was a problem and they uh, bought into it themselves uh, thinking this is a good instrument and that the bank won't go down and you know when it went down it went down so i feel here the problem is the pricing and yes banks 81 bonds at that time were priced also at 99.5% they should have been priced at 14 15% and hdfc also although it's a great bank and all that stuff you we should be pricing the risk of ruin much higher than just like 0.07% higher than than uh, than another bond i feel we are mis- mispricing this risk and therefore if even now they may have issued these bonds to some people tomorrow when you go to a bank many of these people will be uh, coming to you and saying sir hamare paas ek deposit kaisa hai hdfc ka it's like a deposit but it yields much more than a deposit but if they show it to you and it's an at1 additional tier 1 bond run and never visit that branch again net banking se account band kar do transfer kar do ki yahan pe because you know that something is in trouble uh, they shouldn't be selling you this stuff and if they bought it at 7.84 they'll try to sell it to you at 7.54 i'm telling you this is how the system is and so they just don't do it that's my thought process